processing, the dots are then stored on a magnetic disk, something like a phonograph record. By this day, there were already 11,000 pictures from Voyager 2 in our electronic library. Finally, the end product of this remarkable set of links and relays is a hard copy which comes out of this machine showing, in this case, the wonders of Europa, which were recorded for the first time in human history today. It is absolutely astonishing. See, Voyager 1 got very good pictures of the other three big moons, Galilean satellites of Jupiter, but not of Europa. It was left to Voyager 2 today to get the first close-up pictures of Europa where we see things that are only a few kilometers across. And at first glance, it looks like nothing so much as the canal network of Mars that Percival Lowell imagined to exist on that planet. We see an amazing, intricate network of crisscrossing straight and curved lines. Are these straight lines ridges? Are they troughs? Is it connected with plate tectonics on the Earth? How does it illuminate the other satellites of the Jovian system? At this moment, the vaunted technology has produced something astonishing, but it remains for the limitations and cleverness of another device, the human brain, to figure it out. Fortunately, we have plenty of pictures to help us. What, what about Gene's idea of uh, geysers down the troughs? Geysers down the troughs? Well, you got to have a mechanism to drive it. Um, Larry Soderblom, Voyager the road, imaging uh, team. Some wild idea a few months ago that we might have uh, uh, sort of champagne bottle models. And what that is is you seal the crust and you have liquid underneath that solid crust. The question is, do you have the, uh, that kind of condition, which is an explosive? Uh, Lonnie Lane, crust, deputy so project scientist. Over a large area, and you, mm -hmm. I thought you'd have enough resolution in it with some of these pictures that you don't see something yeah. that's spread laterally. Do we have the high resolution piece to blow up? Uh, yeah, it was here somewhere. There it is. There you go. Yeah. So this is where we pick out the relief, and if we're going to see. The things we can recognize. This is what I was Weeks after the pictures morning, from yeah. Europa were received, oh, we were oh, yeah. still debating yeah. what was in them. Yeah. Yeah. It's as if we're, we almost got to the... Uh, here's another thing. Look at the little mesas here. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very bright. We almost it's got bright. to the limit of resolution required to see the craters, the craters which would last indefinitely on a crust this thin. Apart from the Rousseau's, there's a set of very oh, fine, yeah. small dots, markings, mm -hmm. yeah. which are mostly in the model terrain. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like yeah. those guys. Now, do you think those are sites of outgassing, calderas, fumaroles, sulfateras? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing I just picked up. Let's look at this. Here, all right. Look right here. It disappeared. Look right there. <laughs> <laughs> so look oh, yeah, that's You see the central yeah. peak? Yep, yep. yep. Uh, you see a little, little hole? Yeah, it's a... Uh, I don't see a radio caldera. Pattern. I think it's got to be impact crater. Look at the central peak on it. There's almost okay. no impact craters on this planet. Wait, wait, wait. We just found one. Almost none. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> find the exception. Finding one which is alleged to be the, the, the exception, no, I'm, I'm, maybe, maybe it's not the exception, but something else. Perhaps. But on the other hand, you asked about all those little holes that we can't quite make out. So you're going to argue that the, you're resolution right, limited the, these big, the big craters go away by some rheological deformation, and the little ones stay, but they're just uh, at the edge of our resolution. That's because they're one-tenth the depth yeah. of the solid, uh, the rigid yeah. crust. Well, maybe. Computer processing of the pictures has revealed at least a few features on Europa which seem to be impact craters, but something has wiped out the big craters. Computer processing also played a major role in one of the most amazing Voyager discoveries made on the moon next door to Europa, a world called Io. Even from Earth, we could tell that Io had a strange color. We knew that somehow sulfur had been removed from its surface and ejected into a great donut of gas orbiting Jupiter. Then, Voyager 1 sailed close to Io. There were a few places on Io which looked like the mouths of volcanoes but it was hard to be sure. Then, Linda Morabito, a member of the Voyager navigation team, used a computer to enhance a picture of the edge of Io in order to bring out the stars behind. 
Four days after the um, Voyager 1 encounter with Jupiter, I was looking at an optical navigation frame. Now, in enhancing this particular quadrant, became very evident to me was an anomalous crescent in the upper left, left hand corner just off the limb of Io. What was it? The plume turned out to be exactly in the position of one of the suspected volcanoes. So basically we realized at that point that what we were observing was a, a volcanic plume and in fact a volcanic eruption. Voyager had discovered the first active volcano beyond the Earth. We then found that Io has many volcanoes. There are at least nine intermittently active plumes and hundreds, maybe thousands, of extinct ones. The plumes can eject sulfur and other atoms off Io altogether and account for the sulfur clouds surrounding Jupiter. Rivers of molten sulfur flow down the sides of the volcanic mountains and are the probable source of Io's distinctive colors. The volcanoes may be tapping some vast underground ocean of liquid sulfur beneath a surface that is only a few thousand years old. So far in our voyages to the outer solar system, we humans have stayed home and sent our robots and computers to explore in our stead. Someday, perhaps, we'll go ourselves. But suppose, like those Dutch sea captains of the 17th century, the computers aboard Voyager could keep a ship's log. That log, a combination of the events of Voyagers 1 and 2, might read something like this. Day one, after much concern about provisions and instruments, we successfully lift off from Cape Canaveral on our long journey to the planets and the stars. Day 13, we have taken the first photograph of the Earth and Moon as worlds together in space, a pretty pair. Day 170, a problem in the deployment of the boom that supports the science scan platform. If the problem is not solved, we will be unable to take most of our pictures. Day 207, boom problem solved, but failure of main radio transmitter. If the backup transmitter also fails, no one on Earth will ever hear from us again. Day 215, we cross the orbit of Mars and enter the main asteroid belt. Day 570, we can now make out finer detail on Jupiter than the largest telescopes on Earth have ever obtained. Day 640, the cloud patterns are distinctive and gorgeous. No painter trapped on Earth ever imagined a world so strange and lovely. The white clouds are ammonia crystals, high and cold. We do not know the nature of the red-brown clouds. Maybe phosphorus or sulfur is a stain, or perhaps complex organic molecules of the sort that led, four billion years ago back on Earth, to the origin of life. And what is the great red spot? It is an immense, swirling column of gas reaching high above the adjacent clouds so large that it could hold half a dozen Earths. Its motion hypnotizes us. Some think that the red spot is a great spinning storm a million years old. Day 650, encounter, a day of wonders. The ship maneuvers so we can take pictures of the multi-ringed basin on Callisto. Images of the astonishing lined surface of Ganymede. A close passage by Europa. And a view of volcanic Io. We successfully negotiate the treacherous radiation belts and accomplish the ring plane crossing. 
Looking back, we marvel at the rings and see the sun emerge 